What's up everyone, it's Blaze here. This is what we're going to make today, a simple text and then followed by some more text. So what we're going to do over the next couple of videos is basically we're going to create this and eventually we'll have a text box background. Now, if you're following the tutorial series, the RPG tutorial series, or the RPG combat tutorial series rather, this is going to be part of it. But if you're not following it, if you're just watching this video separately and on its own, it will work to your advantage as well. So without further ado, let's get started with this video. Okay, here we are in GMS2. We have an empty project. So like I said, if you're following my combat RPG, uh, RPG combat tutorial series, this will apply to you. And if you're not following that series, if you're just looking for a modern and up-to-date tutorial, for text boxes and in-game text for GMS2, this will also be relevant to you, or rather this mini series will be relevant to you as well. So before we get too far into it, I just wanna say for the subscribers, please watch this video until the very end because I do have a very important update for you guys. And also, if you guys want to read up on this, this is actually an adapted version of Mark Alexander's tutorial for well, in-game text. So let's get into this video. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to create a font. And you can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call mine FNT or font basic. And here in the font window, we have a whole bunch of things that we can adjust. The first thing that we have is the font that we're going to use. We'll just stick to Arial for now. Then we have a group. Basically, you can group your fonts together so that you can have multiple fonts over a few text sheets or sprite sheets. We're not gonna worry too much about any of these things for now. What we are going to change, and this is up to you, is the style from regular to bold and the size from 12 to 14. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to do it for readability's sake. We're pretty much done now with the font, so we can close that. The next thing that I want you guys to do is go ahead and go into the scripts and create a new script. This script is basically going to hold all of the text that we will need to make the text wrap around itself and go over to the next line. So let's name our script. And on the inside, we're going to write our code. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add in two parameters. The first item here is the text, what we're going to print. And the second one is the width, how wide across the screen we want our text to show. Without explaining too much, text wrap basically defines what text that we are going to wrap around. Space is the counter that basically determines whether or not we should skip to the next line. And character pause or character position is where the position is in the entire string of text that we are currently checking. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to run a while loop. And basically, we are going to check the length of our text and see if it's greater than the character position. After that, we're going to do one more check. And we're going to see if space is not minus one. If all of these checks are true, we are going to take our text wrapped and we are going to add a copy of the string of the text at one and at the space, and we are going to add a line break. Forward slash n for strings indicates to GMS2 that we need to write whatever comes next on a new line. Basically, the way that string copy works is it takes a text, a starting position, and how much of that text to copy. The way string length works is it basically takes a couple of arguments and it gives us the length of the actual string itself in numbers. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to set the character position to one, meaning that we are going to start at the first position, as the name suggests. And we are going to reset the space to minus one. The next thing that we're going to do in this while statement is we are going to check to see if the character at where our text is and the position is a space. Keep in mind that here, it is not an empty string. A string can be anything from a number to a symbol, even spaces. So make sure that when you're copying this code, 
that you do leave a space there. And if it is a space, we're simply going to indicate that the space is that character position. After all of that is done, we're going to set the character position plus one, meaning that we're going to increment it by exactly one point. This closes off the while statement itself. However, we're not finished with the script as a whole. Now we're not quite done yet. After the while loop, we are going to have one more if check and we are going to look to see if the string length of the text itself is greater than zero. And if it is, we are going to set the text wrapped to that additional text. Once all of that is done, we just need one more thing. We are going to return this text wrapped variable. Now, if you've read the article, which again is linked in the description and the pinned comment below, this is basically the same and has not changed a single bit. What we are going to work on and what we are going to change most is in the actual object itself. Remember, we want this to appear in our GUI layer, and so we need a few extra tweaks. And in the following video, we are also going to make a text box backing for this. So on top of the original tutorial, we're going to do in a few extra things. So go ahead and create a new object. Once you have your new object, add the following events. Our create event will remain as is. Our draw event will prevent us from drawing two sprites once we implement the text box system itself. And the draw GUI event is where we'll actually draw the text. Finally, the global left pressed event will allow us to skip through the scrolling text if we need to. Starting with the create event, let's put in some new variables to work with. Here we have two very basic lines of text. They're in an array. The first one is a simple hello world statement. And the next one is some lorem ipsum text. You can find plenty of resources and sites where you can get this text. But the idea is to show you guys that this text will wrap around across multiple lines. That's all we're going to work with for now. But if you guys want to expand on that and add a few extra parts of your array, that's totally fine too. Let's get a closer look at these extra variables. Text current is basically going to hold the current text that we will draw to screen. Text last, as the name suggests, is the last item in our array. In this case, it's one, but if you have more than just two of these in your text array, then you're going to want to set that to that number. The next one is the text width. We want our text to draw from essentially one side of our GUI to the other side. And so in our case, what I've set it is the browser width minus 64. Why 64? Well, with the text X, we want an offset of 32 pixels from the left edge of the screen. And for this case, we want 32 pixels plus the character itself. Keep in mind that in GMS2, the origin of most objects is the top left corner. So if we just left this at 64, then that should work. But if we changed it to 32, then it's going to draw the text right up to the edge of the screen. And we don't want that. Remember, once again, that the origin for all things GUI and most objects in GMS2 is the top left corner. So that's why we need 64 in our case. Once again, text X and text Y are our basic offsets for our text. These next two variables are fairly straightforward. The first one is the current character. This is set to one because unlike with other computer code, for us, we need to draw from the first part of the text. The character speed is up to you to set. I have mine set to 0.25, but any speed will work just as long as it doesn't go too fast for the readers. The last line of code is we are going to set the first thing that we want to draw to our screen. In this case, our line is very short, and so running the script on it won't have any immediate effects. But just in case your text is quite long and might spill over into a couple of lines, running this script right from the beginning will help you to understand how the wrapping works. With that, our create event is done. We don't really need to write any script for the draw event. This is simply to prevent us from drawing two instances of the sprite for the next video. Instead, what we'll do is we'll go into the draw GUI event. In its place, we're going to set four things up. We're going to set our font. In this case, we want to use the font that we created. 
So I'm just going to set it to font basic. The next thing that we want to try is setting the align. This is our horizontal alignment. And so we need to make sure, or you need to make sure that it's to your liking. Similarly, V align is the same thing. In this case, however, we want to draw our text at the top of the screen. So it's much easier for us to use FA top. However, at the same time, you could also use FA bottom if that's what you need. The last one is to set our draw color. In this case, we're going to use white, but for you, you can use whatever color text you want. If you're going to use text that has multiple colors in it, then be careful because if you change this color to anything other than white, you're going to get some weird effects. We are going to take our current text and we are going to take the length of it and store it into a local variable called length. We're then going to check to see if the current character position is less than that length. We're going to print out more letters using character speed. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to copy the current text starting from position one, right up until the character's current position. And we're going to store that into a variable called str. Using that information, we're then going to draw the text at text x, text y, and of course, the string variable that we just created. With this code, we're basically done with drawing text to our screen. However, we can't progress through to the next set of text without some sort of control. This is where global left press comes into play. For us, the first thing that we're going to do when we left click anywhere on the screen is we are going to take the string length and store it in a local variable called length. We're then going to check to see if the current character is less than that length of the string. And if it is, we are going to force the rest of the text to print out. If the character's current position is equal to or greater than the length, we're just going to skip to the next message. Now this is just some temporary code. And like I said, it's almost a direct copy from the original article. Again, it is linked in the description and the pinned comment. But if our text current or our current text is basically the last part of text, we are going to restart the room basically looping the room around and around. Now for the actual RPG followers, we are going to do something else. And for implementing it into your own game, this line of code needs to change. However, if it isn't the last part of the text, we need to do something else. In our code here, we can see that the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to set our text to whatever's next. And we are also going to run our wrapping function around that new text. And then we're going to set the character's current position back to zero so we can start printing out that text one by one again. The last thing that we need to do is add our new object into the room for testing. Open up your room editor, drag in your object. Let's save the game out and see if it runs. There's our text, it says hello world. And of course, the next thing that it's going to do is print each and every single line on our screen. This is quite slow, and I encourage you guys to take a look at your code, specifically the speed, and see and tweak it to suit you. Now you can see that it will only print the full word. There's no hyphenation or line breaks where it's not needed. And of course, if we click, it restarts. Now, like I said, if it's printing out this long text, you can click again to print out the whole thing. This just about wraps up this video. In the next one, we're going to expand on this concept a little more by adding a nine slice backing. Thank you so much for making it to the end. Now, what I just wanna say is that for the next two weeks, I won't be able to upload any game dev programming tutorials because I've got a project coming up and that needs my full attention. However, if you're watching my channel and you are watching it for the indie game stuff, that will still continue. The main reason being because I've actually already edited and they're ready to be uploaded. I just need to do the uploading part of it. So thank you very much guys. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.